Hello and welcome to Tax Matters. Happy Eid al Fitri to all our Muslim compatriots. May Allah grant you due reward for your sacrifices at this period. And talking about reward, we are beginning today's episode with stories of rewards given to two major taxpayers who have keyed into the program of the government to make life better for the citizenry with taxes. You will recall that on the 25th of January 2019, President Muhammad Buhari launched the Road Infrastructure Development and Refurbishment Investment Tax Credit Scheme, consequent upon his earlier signing into law of the Executive Order 007, which kicked off the construction and rehabilitation of 19 roads and bridges spanning 794.4 kilometers across 11 states of the Federation. The scheme is aimed at getting private sector operators to support government to bridge the infrastructural deficit in the country. In return, the federal government, through the Federal Inland Revenue Service, shall issue tax credit certificates to the companies. Yes, tax credit certificate, not tax clearance certificate that you are all familiar with. Participants in the scheme shall be entitled to utilize the project cost incurred in the construction or refurbishment of eligible roads as a credit against companies' income tax payable. In furtherance of this, the first sets of tax credit certificates were issued on October 29, 2019 to Dangote Cement PLC and the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Limited at the Federal Ministry of Finance headquarters in Abuja. Now for the third time, a tax credit certificate was presented to the NLNG at Revenue House, Abuja, on Thursday, the 22nd of April, 2021. On hand to receive the NLNG team at Revenue House was Mr. Femi Oluwane, Coordinating Director, Tax Operations Group, who stood in for the Executive Chairman, FRS, Mr. Muhammad Nami. Uh, over the years, those three, three years now, we have had uh, majorly two of our uh, very big organizations in Nigeria, essentially uh, our guests of today. That's the Nigeria LNG and precisely Dangote Nigeria Limited have taken advantage of this initiative. They have committed money and they have gotten at the very highest levels. Uh, credits so approved against tax payments. Uh, as a matter of fact, NLNG itself, this is the third such certificate that they are collecting. And um, uh, it's running into about 46 billion naira of their own money that they have used to develop that this particular uh, road project, I mean bridge, in River State where they are located, called the Bodo Borne Road which bridges across Opobo Channel in River State. And it's uh, roughly about 120 billion naira in terms of uh, the contract value, the project value. So we are glad that uh, the initiatives of government, the intentions of government in that regard is working out. And before you know it, this project will have been completed and uh, Nigeria will be the better for it. Just like uh, uh, the coordinating director mentioned, this is our third tax credit certificate that we are collecting on, on behalf of uh, LNG shareholders. And uh, we would like to say thank you uh, to the Honorable Minister of Works and Honorable Minister of Finance and also the Chairman of the FRS who are part of the management committee of the executive order where the submission first comes to for them to approve before we can come down to FIRS. And we would like to put on record as well that last year we got the tax credit certificate in November and this year we're getting it in March. So that is a testament to the efficiency of the process in FIRS 
and in the management committee. One, one more thing is that we remain committed to making sure this road, uh, the Bonny Bodo Road project is completed in, on time in line with the contract which is quarter 3, 2022. So we will continue to fund this project to ensure that it is completed in the dispensation of, the, of Mr. President. And then the presentation of the certificate. The following week, Wednesday, the 28th of April 2021, a delegation of Dangote Cement PLC was also at Revenue House to receive two task credit certificates to the tune of 21.6 billion naira. Again on hand to receive the Dangote Cement PLC delegation was Mr. Femi Oluwane. Uh, just last week, we were gathered together like this to... Um, do exactly the same thing that we'll be doing today. I did say then, uh, on behalf of the chairman, that we actually have two uh, companies in Nigeria that are taking advantage of what uh, Mr. President signed as an executive order in 2019 uh, called um, EO Executive Order Number no. 7, which is about the uh, road infrastructure uh, tax credit. Um, yeah, what that entails is that companies are encouraged to develop infrastructure around them uh, as long as it will enhance their uh, delivery, their business, and yet, um, in a way, like taking over the responsibility of government because it will ultimately impact on the immediate environment, the populace who are expected to be taken care of by government. So we have done good day, uh, very, very active in that regard. And this one has particularly to do with um, uh, two projects, actually, that are running. The Lokoja, Obajano, Kaba, Ilori Road. There's another one which is in Lagos. It's from Apapa to, through Oguro Shoki to the Ojota Ex Expressway. In terms of the uh, Apapa Oroshoki Ojota Expressway project, this is the second certificate that we will be presenting to them. And um, this is uh, precisely 21.6 billion naira in value. Now, the project itself is about 80, roughly 88 billion naira. By the way, the first one was in 2019. That's about uh, 9.5 billion naira. So you can almost say that that uh, our estimation would be nearly completion. Uh, but like we said the other time, uh, I think it will be in the interest of governments that other investors take advantage, other business uh, entrepreneurs, uh, companies, they take advantage of this scheme uh, such that Nigeria can develop uh, faster than probably government would have taken it itself. Engineer Manso Ahmed led the Dangote Cement PLC team, and to him, it was a dream come true. I would like to appreciate the support and cooperation of the FIRS since this program started. Let me digress a little to say on a personal note that this process and this particular program is of personal interest to me because perhaps some may remember I was the pioneer director general of the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission so many years back and one of the initiatives we had proposed was this type of initiative because we see it as the most effective and innovative way of public-private partnership to grow our infrastructure we need, we need roads, we need railways, we need water, we need electricity, everything. And there's no reason why any of these things cannot be done in a similar way. So we are delighted that today we are receiving two or no, three more certificates. Actually, we had, I, was the, I had the pleasure to receive the first one. So I'm delighted that I'm also receiving the second and the third.
and, and assure you that we will do everything we can to comply with the requirements in terms of the quality of the work, in terms of the speed with which it is done, because that is the primary uh, driver for bringing private sector into it. And of course, in terms of making sure that it is done on budget. Mr. Luani thereafter proceeded to present the certificates. We understand that there are two certificates to be presented. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the one that has to do with the local Jaubajano mm -hmm. road. That's the second for that uh, project. The first one for the Apapa Uroshoki Ojota Expressway uh, is hereby also being presented on behalf of uh, FRS. There you are. Tax credit certificate. Everyone is used to tax clearance certificate, which comes at the end of the tax compliance process when you have duly and fully fulfilled your tax obligations. This new one, well, not exactly new, the tax credit certificate, also TCC for short, is issued in lieu of taxes payable when a corporate body undertakes the construction or erection of infrastructure on behalf of government. We do hope that more of this will happen to lighten the burden on government and to make life livable for the citizenry. <music> London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Still staying with the FRS. Ardent viewers of Tax Matters must by now be used to our stories of the strategy sessions, otherwise known as retreats, held by deceased groups in the FRS. Of course, it is widely accepted that he who fails to plan, plans to fail. Yes, indeed, the primary duty of the FRS is to assess, collect and account for taxes. But then, as with every organization, the core mandate does not constitute the beginning and the end. A hospital would, of necessity, have other core departments beyond medical practice. Transport department, finance department, human resources, security, training, the list is endless. So it is with the FRS. Yes, it is a tax collecting agency, but that work is only made easy by the collective efforts of all and sundry. One of the groups is aptly named General Services Group, the General Services Group held its 2021 retreat from Friday the 9th to Saturday the 10th of April 2021. Mr. Innocent Ohagwa is the Coordinating Director, General Services Group. The theme of the 2021 retreat is service as a tool for effective and efficient FRS, taking into consideration that we need to discharge our support and services to other uh, groups. The role of general services group is very relevant to our current realities as a group, providing necessary support to our operational departments and other stakeholders within and outside the Federal Land Revenue Service. The executive chairman FRS, Mr. Muhammad Nami, was personally on hand to flag off the general services group retreat. If every group understands its mandate and operates effectively and efficiently, 
the entire FRS will remain as a champion in all ramifications. Looking at the four cardinal pillars of this administration, it will clearly reveal that the roles of your group cut across the four cardinal pillars. Mr. Babs Olubemi presented a paper on the theme of the retreat. Service as a tool for effective and efficient FRS, the role of the General Services Group. Now, this is the retreat logo we designed for you. And we also designed the retreat payoff. Six departments, but how many groups is one group serving in FRS? How many other groups do you have? Five. So one group is responsible for five groups. Those five groups, how many departments are in those five groups? Uncountable. How many divisions are under that, those departments? So, and look at general service. Just six departments carrying the weight of what? Of other departments. The effectiveness of FIRS cannot be higher than the effectiveness and capacity of general service staff. A small group of people that has the mental and well-being capacity to say this is not just a job, we are called to service. If you don't do our job very well as human capital, as career and skill, I will drop the ball. It's going to affect 120 million Nigerians. It's going to affect other groups. It's a call, it's no longer a job. The Director Revenue Accounting Department, Mrs. Frances Okorafo, reeled out the achievements of the department for the year 2020. The Revenue Accounting is one of the departments under the General Service Group. Its major responsibility is to ensure proper accounting and reporting of all taxes collected to the management of the service and to the external stakeholders. We are to ensure that taxes are captured in their appropriate revenue accounts. In all the tax types, whether PPT, CIT, BAT, education tax, and so on, they have pool accounts and it is domiciled in CBN. So we work closely with CBN and the Accountant General of the Federation. So we attend a lot of meetings. We attend the FAC meetings where we all the Accountant Generals of the Federation come and then they reconcile all our reports presented to them. There's post-mortem uh, committee under RAMFAC, Revenue Mobilization, we also reconcile with them. We monitor the activities of all the banks, all the banks in Nigeria, except few banks that didn't meet up the collection criteria are working with us, 17 of them. They work with us every day. We make sure that whatever the taxpayers pay, they remit on time. And if they don't remit on time, they are sanctioned. Other papers were also presented in the course of the two-day retreats. Other coordinating directors were in attendance at the retreat and bore testimony to the importance of the General Services Group to the smooth operation of the FRS. You can talk of all the strategies, all the initiatives, but without appropriate support from the General Services Group. Definitely will not meet our mandate. Like somebody has said earlier, what are you supporting? What services are you providing, if not to ensure that it is well with my team? That's the tax operations group. And on behalf of them, today I've come to really appreciate you. I've come to acknowledge you. You support us well. Facilities, building and works, finance, careers and skill, revenue accounting, human Capital. Now, I want to thank the GSG. We've had a lot of interface, and uh, we've been appreciative of all the support you've been giving us. It has really been helpful. Though the role of the group is to provide support to all other groups, it is important to note that in view of the service rendered by the various departments in the group, it is not out of place to say that the group in the engine room of the service. 
you are the oil. I might see this say you are the engine. But me, I prefer to call you are the oil that we use to lubricate the engine. And what do I mean? For example, salaries are paid by you. If you don't pay your salary, <laughs> we will not uh, be motivated, we won't be happy. If you don't provide us with a facility or equipment to deliver, we won't be able to deliver. So you are the oil with which we oil, we lubricate uh, the engine of FRS. The FRS deserves commendation for the successes that it has achieved and continues to achieve. And as you have seen, the General Services Group has been instrumental in no small measure to this success and in its appellation, the oil that lubricates the FRS engine. The success being recorded by the service will however not be complete without hardline measures taken with the clear intention of whipping tax defaulters into line. We have two public notices from the Office of the Executive Chairman. The Federal Inland Revenue Service has issued a public notice on persecution of tax offenders. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 47 of the FRS Establishment Act No. 13, 2007, as amended, the service shall henceforth prosecute all tax offenses listed in Part C of the FRS Establishment Act and other relevant tax laws, particularly offenses of tax evasion, tax fraud, failure to deduct or remit tax, obstruction, false declaration, counterfeiting of documents, failure to file tax returns, among others. In doing this, the FRS shall take full advantage of the powers given to it in Section 49, Subsection 2 of the FRS Establishment Act to prosecute directors, managers, secretaries, partners, and every person involved in the management of the affairs of a company, firm, or association where a tax offense is committed by any person, firm, or association. The public notice also reminds the general public of the provisions of Section 24F of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended and enjoins the public to register for tax, declare all income honestly, correctly and accurately, and pay appropriate taxes in compliance with the relevant tax laws in order to avoid persecution. The second public notice in our possession is on the payment of outstanding taxes by defaulting companies, corporations, and other entities. The FRS cites Section 78, 79, 80, 81, and 82 of the Companies Income Tax Act and Sections 14, 15, and 16 of the Value Added Tax Act which impose obligations on companies, corporations, and other relevant persons as agents of collection to collect, deduct, or withhold taxes, as the case may be, on supply of goods and services or payments, and to remit same to the FRS. Accordingly, all persons who have collected, deducted, or withheld taxes are, by this notice, required to remit all unremitted taxes to the service not later than 30 days from the date of publication of this notice. Failing which the service shall, without further notice, apply the provisions of Section 31 of the Establishment Act to recover taxes due from the defaulter's assets in the custody of any, including but not limited to some standing to its credit, with a financial institution in Nigeria. In addition, the service shall take all necessary steps to prosecute defaulters for willful neglect, tax evasion, unlawful conversion of government property, as the case may be. Penalties and interests on all outstanding taxes shall be recovered along with the principal tax liabilities.
That is all time will allow us to take on this episode of Tax Matters. Make it a date with us next week on this same station, same day of the week, same time of the day. And permit us to say that it is a great week. It is the week of the 23rd Annual Task Conference holding in Kaduna from Tuesday the 18th to Friday the 21st of May 2021. We are raring to go and we hope to see you there. Thank you for watching.